First question, x squared over 4 minus x is equal to 3. Now the first thing you want to do is you find the x squared term. Is there a coefficient in front of it? Now in this case there is. And I've been telling you the whole time that you want to make sure there's just a 1 here. Here there's a 1 fourth in front. We want to clear that. So we need to figure out a way to do that. So the easiest way to do that is just to multiply well, let's do it like this. Multiply the entire left-hand side by the number 4, and then you multiply the right-hand side by the number 4. Remember, any equation that you have, you can multiply left and right-hand side by whatever you want. And in doing that, the 4 will get distributed to this by multiplication and cancel here. And then it also needs to be multiplied into this term. So you got to be really careful when you multiply both left and right-hand side. You need to wrap parentheses to make sure that the multiplication happens to everything on, one, on, on both sides. So really what you're going to be left with is just x squared, because the 4 will cancel with the 4. And then the 4 times the negative x means you'll have a negative 4x. And on the right-hand side, you'll have 12. Now, doesn't that look a lot nicer? Because ultimately, this equation is exactly equivalent to the previous one that we started with. In other words, it has the same solutions as the equa equation that we started with. Now, we have a coefficient of 1 here. We check for any constant terms on the left, and there are none. All the constants are on the right. In this case, it's just the number 12, so we're good. Now we continue with our procedure. Negative 4 divided by 2 square the result. What do we get? Negative 2 squared, what do we get? 4. So that's our magic number. We need to add 4 to the left and also 4 to the right, and then that will give us a perfect square. So let's do it. x squared minus 4x. We add 4 to the left. And we also add 4 to the right. So we suspect, or we better, get a perfect square here. So let's go ahead and try to factor it. x, x, what times what gives you 4? 2 times 2 looks like it's going to work. We have a negative sign in the middle, so we strongly suspect we'll need negatives everywhere. And on the right-hand side, we're going to get uh, 16. All right, so double check yourself here. Negative 2 times negative 2 gives you the positive 4. Inside terms are negative 2x. This gives you negative 2x. You add them. You get that, so you're good, and then you write it as a square term equals 16. That's, again, the end game of all of these problems. You want a square term equal to a number. So we take the square root of the left. That just gives us x minus 2. The square root of, right, of the right-hand side is going to be plus or minus, which you have to add yourself, 16. So you have x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus square root of 16, which is 4. So we can take that, and we have two answers. x is going to be... We need to basically move the 2 over by adding it. So we're going to add 2 to both sides. It'll be plus or minus 4 plus 2. We add 2 to the left and 2 to the right. So ultimately we have x is equal to 4 plus 2, which is 6. That's one of the answers. And we have x is equal to negative 4 plus 2, which is negative 2. That's the other answer. So positive 6, negative 2. These are the two answers that we get. And if you take these in and stick it into the original equation or into this slightly modified version of it, it's going to satisfy. Both of them are going to work. So you see, we just had to insert one extra step. Clear whatever you have here. If, if your equation was 3x squared here instead of 1 fourth, to get rid of that 3, you would need to divide the entire left-hand side by 3. Divide the first term by 3, divide the second term by 3, and you'd also have to divide the other side by 3. So multiplying and dividing can clear any coefficient in front of the x squared term. Uh, and we will do that again in this problem, as you will see. 3x squared over 4 minus 3 is equal to x over 2. Now this is cumbersome for lots of reasons. First of all, we have an x squared term, but 3 fourths is our coefficient, so we, we need to make that 1. Then we also have a constant term, so we're going to need to move that over there. And then the x term, which we really need to be able to do anything with completing the square, we need to move that over to the other side. So we have a lot of work to do. But you need to pick one thing to work on first. You can do them in any order. What I'm going to work on first is getting rid of this 4. I'm going to get rid of this 4. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to multiply the entire left-hand side of this equation by 4, and that means I'm going to have to multiply the right-hand side by 4. I wrapped it in parentheses because the 4 needs to be applied to everything on the left. When I apply it to the first term by multiplication, these 4s are going to cancel, so all I'm going to have left is 3x squared. This 4 multiplied by the negative 3 is going to give me negative 12, and on the right-hand side, I have a 2 on the bottom and a 4 on the top. I can divide top and bottom by 2. So basically, on the right-hand side, I just have 2x. Okay? 
So now it's a little bit better, but I still have this 3 in front of the x squared. I still have that 3 in front of the x squared. So let me rewrite this. 3x squared minus 12 is equal to 2x. So ultimately, I do not want this 3 here. So I need to divide the entire left-hand side by 3 and the entire right-hand side by 3. Now when I divide something linked together by this minus sign by a 3, then what it basically becomes is I divide this term by 3 and this term by 3 and this term by 3. Is You're dividing every single term that you have by 3 is what you're doing. So these 3's go away, so all I have left is x squared here. Negative 12 divided by 3 gives me negative 4 here. And on the right-hand side, unfortunately, it's starting to get ugly because now it's 2x over 3 and I can't cancel anything. But doing all of these operations means that um, effectively I've got a, one, a coefficient of 1 here. So that's what I want. But I want the x term, whatever it is, to be right behind the x squared term. And I want the 4 term to go to the other side. So I'm going to do both of these steps at the same time. I'm going to add 4 to both sides and I'm going to subtract 2x over 3 from both sides. What I'm going to be left with is x squared minus 2x over 3 is equal to positive 4. Now I need you to make sure and stop that you, and make sure you understand this. You subtract 4, or you add 4 to both sides so it, it gets rid of it on the left and you have positive 4 on the right. At the same time you subtract 2x minus 2x over 3 from the right means it disappears and you subtract it from the left that's what you get. Now check yourself. You have a coefficient of 1 in front of the x squared. You have some x term. You don't have any numbers on the left hand side. All of them are on the right. So you're in a good place. Now you have to do this work. You have to take that middle term, which is ugly, admittedly, negative two thirds. That's what that coefficient is. Okay. And uh, actually, I'm going to take both of those away. You're going to take that and you're going to divide that whole thing by two. Whatever that coefficient is, you have to divide it by two and then you square it. But don't forget, when you divide by 2, you're dividing by 2 over 1, right? So you can change this f f a division here into multiplication. So what you really have to get the answer is negative 2 thirds. Change that division to multiplication, and then you flip over the bottom fraction. 2 over 1 is going to be 1 half. So you multiply the tops, negative 2 times 1, giving you negative 2. You multiply the bottoms, giving you 6. So that's negative uh, 2 6. Now what does that mean? You can divide, of course, the top by 2 and the bottom by 2. When you divide the top by 2, um, you're going to get negative 1. And you divide the bottom by 2, you're going to get 3. Now don't forget, going back to the beginning here, you do all that division, you're squaring it. So I kind of left this out in, in writing it. You're doing that, you're squaring it, you're doing that, and you get the, the answer that you get, you're squaring it. So we want to square this guy. What is negative one-third squared? Negative one-third squared means negative one-third times negative one-third. The negatives are going to cancel. You're going to be left with one-ninth. Make sure you understand this. You take this fraction, you divide it by two. You turn it into multiplication because you're dividing fractions. That's just one way to handle it. Then you do this multiplication. You get negative two-sixths. All right? And then you, uh, you simplify this to negative one-third because that can be simplified, then you have to square it, giving you one ninth. This is your magic number. This is what you add to the left. This is what you also add to the right, here at this step. That's what you're going to do. So we're going to continue the problem over here. x squared minus 2x over 3 plus 1 ninth on the left equals 4 plus 1 ninth on the right. Now I'll admit it, it's, it's ugly. It doesn't look fun because you have this fraction to add here, and then you've got all these fractions here. It's not good. So let's first try to add these guys here. Let's go ahead and try to add these. I want to make a common denominator, so I'm going to multiply 9 over 9 uh, there to give me a common denominator, and I'm adding 1 ninth to it. So what I'm going to get is 9 times 4 is 36 ninths plus 1 ninth. 1 ninth is 37 ninths. So the addition of these terms on the left-hand side is 37 ninths. So let's rewrite our problem. x squared minus 2x over 3 plus 1 ninth is equal to, and on the right-hand side, it's just 37 ninths. So yes, it's ugly. <laughs> but now we have to factor the left, and we should have a perfect square if we've done it right. So let's see if we've done it right. On the right-hand side, it's 37 ninths. So we have an x here and an x here. What times what is going to give us 1 ninth? 
Well, think about it. If it were just 1 here, you would stick a 1 there. 1 times 1 is 1. If it was just a 9, you would say 3 times 3 is 9. So for the fraction, basically 1 third is what you're looking for. And because of the interior sign here being a negative, you know that you need a negative and a negative. Double check yourself. Negative 1 third times negative 1 third does give you positive 1 ninth. These inside terms give you negative 1 third. These outside terms give you negative 1 third. You add them, you get negative 2 thirds. So that is a perfect square. Thank goodness, and you can write it as x minus one third squared uh, equals thirty-seven ninths. X minus one third squared uh, is equal to thirty-seven ninths. Now we've cluttered up this page enough, so let's move on down. Let me rewrite what I just wrote. I just wrote x minus one third squared is equal to thirty-seven ninths. Now, how do we solve this? You have a perfect square on the left, so we take the square root of the left. All you're going to have is x minus one-third left. On the right, you're going to have plus or minus the square root of 37 ninths, which you can write as the square root of 37 on the top and the square root of 9 on the bottom. Now, in the top, you can't really simplify that 37 anymore because you can't find something times itself to give you 37. So what you're really going to do is leave that as the square root of 37. But on the right, 3 times 3 is 9, so of course that's what you have. So let's rewrite everything. You have x minus 1 third is equal to plus or minus the square root of 37 over 3. Now to solve for x, we add 1 third to both sides. So x is going to be equal to 1 third um, plus, you know what, let's do it a different way. Let's, let's do it as um, square root 37 over 3, and we'll add to that, that's plus or minus from before, we'll add to that 1 third. Now, thankfully, the denominators, being 3, are the same. So we have two answers here. We have x can be equal to positive square root of 37 over 3 plus 1 third. These are common denominator. So you can write that as add the numerators together over 3. That's the first answer. I know it's ugly, but that's what it is. And the second one is you have to take that negative sign with the square root of 37. So the second answer is... Um, negative square root 37 over 3 plus 1 third. And so essentially what you're going to have there is you're going to subtract the tops, or I guess you can just say you can add the negative square root of 37 plus the 1 over 3. So essentially you're adding the numerators together. This happens to be negative. The denominator is 3. So let me just double check that I've written everything correctly. So I have for the first one, square root of 37 plus 1 on the top, 3 on the bottom. The next one, negative square root of 37 plus 1 on the top, 3 on the bottom. Those are the answers, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes when you complete the square, you get ugly answers. Um, it just happens. But if you take those and you stick them back into the original problem that we had, you're going to get the correct answer. It's going to satisfy the equation. So in all of these cases, we're completing the square and we're following the same recipe every time. But I hope that I've broken down the mystery as to what you're doing. You're not just randomly doing it. You're using the, the rules of algebra and, and, and kind of how binomials work to find that perfect number that you can add to the left and the right in order to make a perfect square. So make sure you understand this. Grab a sheet of paper uh, and, and, and make sure you can do all of these yourself because completing the square is one of the most powerful tools in algebra to solve these quadratic equations. And you will be asked you know, to do it on your test and on your homework. So make sure you understand it, solve these problems yourself, watch the lesson again if you need to, do the worksheet problems, and then follow me on to the next lesson in algebra. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.